8. Plot to Kidnap the Pope in 1943, the Vatican joined a growing list of ruling bodies who openly condemned Adolf Hitler's views and policies. It was around this time that former SS General Karl Wolf would later claim that he was tasked with kidnapping the Pope. Wolf came forward with the allegation during the 70s, claiming that the Nazi dictator had commanded him to occupy the Vatican, seize its records and treasures, and abduct the Pope to prevent him from falling under Allied protection. There are conflicting opinions among experts about whether Wolf's claims are true. In his 2007 book on the topic, former Washington Post correspondent Dan Kurzman argued that his interviews with Vatican officials and German military members, including Wolf himself, left little doubt that the kidnapping plot was real. Kurzman admitted that there are no known German documents referencing the mission, but that this is because Hitler banned his underlings from putting any of it into writing. British journalist John Cornwell also said that he believed the plot was real and that Wolf talked Hitler out of putting it into action. Others are less convinced. Historians David Alvarez and Robert A. Graham described the evidence of the alleged kidnapping as mixed at best. They also pointed out that the abduction would have outraged Catholics around the world, including in heavily Catholic Nazi-occupied countries. Historian Owen Chadwick accused the British of spreading propaganda, airing fake broadcasts, and more or less pretending that the plot was real and about to happen. He further explained that it seems as though both the Germans and the Allies had agreed to leave the Vatican alone, making a kidnapping incredibly unlikely, in Chadwick's opinion. 7. Salon Kitty Before it was pulled into the Nazis' secretive wartime shenanigans, Salon Kitty was simply a high-end brothel located in an upscale Berlin neighborhood. It became a Nazi-run business in 1939, when Hitler and his top officials saw it as a clever way to spy on high-ranking members of their own party. The brothel's owner, Katerina Zamet, had tried to flee to the Netherlands the previous year, but she was detained at the border. From there, she fell under the control of a Nazi intelligence agent named Walter Schellenberg and one of his colleagues, who co-conspired to use the brothel as a spying operation. They told Zamet that her only two choices were to either cooperate or go to a concentration camp. Zamet continued to run the business as normally as possible, but she no longer made the rules. Extra workers were hired, she had no choice in the matter, and was told to pair the ladies up with specific Nazi customers. Schellenberg's team recruited the 20 women they sent to the Salon Kitty during arrests for prostitution at other establishments. They also found attractive female candidates through Nazi administrative offices. The brothel was also riddled with microphones and now had a listening room in the basement, where intelligence officers listened to conversations between escorts and their Nazi customers. The women took their targeted patrons into their rooms and gave them alcohol to loosen them up. Records are scarce, and the extent of the information gathered from these encounters is unknown, but it appears as though the operation failed to generate any major findings. By the time the British destroyed the building in an air raid in 1942, the project had been deemed useless and was abandoned. 6. Operation Aish by the time the Allies invaded Italy in 1943, much of the population had started to realize that their country was losing the war. Fed up with their fascist and pro-Nazi leader Benito Mussolini, citizens voted him out of power and the king arrested him. This came as troubling news to Adolf Hitler, who believed that Mussolini's support was imperative to keeping Italy on the Nazis' side in the war. And he wasn't exactly wrong. By then, Italy had agreed to participate in secret peace talks with the Allies, and it seemed impossible that Mussolini would be turned over to the Allies. Hitler invaded northern Italy and succeeded in dividing the country's power among warring enemies. He then got started on his mission to rescue Mussolini from government custody. In a mission code named Operation Aish, also known as the Grand Sasso Raid, Hitler ordered Waffen-SS officer Otto Skorzeny to free Mussolini before he ended up in Allied custody. Skorzeny managed to track the disgraced dictator down at a remote ski resort in Italy's Apennine Mountains. He and 16 SS troopers traveled there on gliders, which enabled them to make a silent approach before they stormed the property. The intruders easily overwhelmed the guards and destroyed their radio equipment. Once they found Mussolini, he reportedly said, I knew my friend Adolf Hitler would not leave me in the lurch. Scorzini scrambled to get the ousted leader on a plane and personally escorted him to Austria. The entire raid was carried out in less than 10 minutes and not a single bullet was fired. For a short time, Mussolini led a puppet government the Nazis had set up in northern Italy. But by early 1945, it was clear that the Allies were overpowering the Axis presence. Worried that the British or Americans might take him prisoner, or that he could be tried as a war criminal in Italy, 
Mussolini attempted to flee to neutral Switzerland with his mistress. Partisan forces shot them both dead at the border, and Italian authorities made an example out of the couple by displaying their bodies in the streets of Milan. 5. Antarctic Expedition There are numerous conspiracy theories about secret Nazi bases and projects in Antarctica. One tale claims that the Germans and the Illuminati shared a clandestine base known as Base 22 or New Berlin and that it was the size of a small city. As if that wasn't weird enough on its own, the alleged facility was supposedly dedicated to the development of highly advanced weapons inspired by the Nazis' encounters with aliens from outer space. Some people even believe that the base still operates today and that the Nazis, the Illuminati, and the extraterrestrials who share it are planning to launch a new world order. Realistically speaking, these claims are highly unlikely, but the Nazis did set their sights on Antarctica as the party gained power during the 1930s. Eager to claim a part of the world's most southerly continent for themselves, the party sent an expedition there to decide which area they wanted to take ownership of. Fearing that Germany would be cut off from trading with other nations, they also hoped to develop alternatives to imported oil and fat-based products like butter, cream, milk, lard, margarine, and candles. Whale oil seemed like a good way to do this, further attracting the Nazis to Antarctica. Until then, the Germans had relied on Norway for whale oil, but they wanted to be self-sufficient and no longer wanted to give the country their business. In 1938, they headed toward Antarctica in newly built whaling ships. They headed for a region called Dronning Maud Land, but Norwegian explorers arrived there first in early 1939 and claimed ownership of the territory. The Nazis disputed Norway's ownership of Dronning Maud Land, decided to call it Nauschweben Land, and made plans to return at least twice in the near future. But it fell to the back burner as the war intensified and these return voyages never happened. Some modern historians believe that the Germans planned to build a base there, but most mainstream scholars agree that the plan never came to fruition. There's no evidence that the Nazis returned to Antarctica, and they abandoned their claims to it when the war ended in 1945. Do you think there's a secret Nazi base in Antarctica? Tell us in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. 4. Operation Pastorius Taking over the United States was a major part of Adolf Hitler's plan for world domination. Hoping to seize control of the country from the inside, he targeted factories, transit facilities, and other sites of economic importance, including hydroelectric plants at Niagara Falls, numerous aluminium plants, the Horseshoe Curve Railroad Pass in Pennsylvania, and Hellgate Bridge in New York. In a mission codenamed Operation Pastorius, eight agents received fake IDs and $175,000 in cash, along with instructions to blow up the specified targets. They traveled to the American East Coast in June of 1942 in a pair of U-boats, one of which landed at a manga set in New York. The agents then took a train into Manhattan via the Long Island Railroad, while the other party landed in Jacksonville, Florida. By then, authorities had found out about the plot, and a manhunt was well underway. In the meantime, agents George Dash and Ernst Berger, who'd both landed in New York, talked and agreed that they chose the mission because they disagreed with Nazism and wanted to defect to the US. The pair turned themselves into the FBI, and the other six conspirators were captured shortly thereafter. Their claims that they wanted to escape Nazi Germany were met with enough skepticism for Berger to receive a life sentence, while Dash was sentenced to 30 years behind bars. The remaining six agents were executed in the electric chair just weeks after being caught. 3. Operation Greif Also known as the Ardennes Offensive, the Battle of the Bulge was the Germans' last major offensive on the Western Front. It took place in the dense Ardennes forest between Belgium and Luxembourg starting in December 1944. At the battle's outset, Adolf Hitler ordered commando leader Otto Scorzini to do what he could to run interference on Allied communications and sabotage the enemy's morale in a mission codenamed Operation Greif. It involved sending English-speaking Germans behind enemy lines wearing uniforms and dog tags taken from American prisoners of war and with forged US military documents. The infiltrators wreaked havoc on Allied operations in numerous ways. They misdirected tank traffic, switched road signs around, and destroyed telephone lines and ammunition dumps. Luckily for the Allies, the undercovers didn't do any serious damage. More than anything, they managed to confuse and inconvenience US troops. As soon as they caught on to the scheme, American soldiers spread the word and warned others to be on the lookout for suspected culprits. In a bid to identify infiltrators, they set up road checks and quizzed military members passing through on US pop culture and sports. Unfortunately, this proved to be an inaccurate way to gauge authenticity and led to the detention of genuine Allied troops. 
To further throw off the enemy, any imposters who were captured claimed that there was a plot to kill General Dwight D. Eisenhower. Out of an abundance of caution, he was put into protective housing. Operation Greif failed to significantly impact the Allied war effort and eventually came to a standstill. By the time US forces stopped searching for the commandos, they had been pulled out of the mission and were long gone. 2. The Honoreb Founded in 1935 by leading Nazi Party member Heinrich Himmler, the Arnereb was a think tank and SS faction devoted to finding evidence to back up their belief that Germans descended from a superior ancient Aryan race. The group consisted mainly of scientists and scholars from various academic disciplines. In addition to crediting Aryans for most of humanity's major accomplishments throughout history, the Arnereb argued that its racial doctrine was supported by scientific research. Of course, most of the world's academic community disagreed, but Arnereb Arnereb scholars found ways to interpret the evidence to fit their narrative. Hitler's government used their findings to justify many of its unspeakably cruel policies. Members of the organization even ventured out to different parts of Europe in search of artifacts from this alleged ancient race. In late 2015, news reports claim that a civilian found a brown Arnereb suitcase in Russia's Adygea Mountains. Speaking with the press, a local hermit reportedly claimed that the case bore the group's insignia, along with two skulls belonging to unidentifiable creatures. It appears as though these objects were never studied by credible scholars, leaving their authenticity highly questionable. But news of the discoveries left some wondering if Arnareb members had come to the area to search for evidence of their alleged Aryan roots. 1. Operation Werewolf Toward the end of World War II, Hitler realized that the Nazis were losing the conflict. In a last-ditch effort to gain an upper-hand codenamed Operation Werewolf, he ordered the creation of a resistance force that would operate secretly behind enemy lines. After the war, many people mistakenly believed that the members of this elite regiment fought in plainclothes or disguise. But they were actually uniformed soldiers who were meant to operate in a similar fashion to Allied commandos. Headquartered in Berlin, the project planned to train recruits in guerrilla warfare tactics the Nazis had seen the Soviets using in some of their captured territories, including Ukraine. But things didn't go exactly as planned. Rumors of a secret Nazi guerrilla force began to circulate shortly after the Allied invasion of Normandy in 1944, also known as D-Day. The following year, the notorious high-ranking German politician Joseph Goebbels urged Germans to fight the Allies to the death in what became known as the Werewolf Speech. But by then, unbeknownst to most of the world, the Werewolf Unit was already in the process of being dismantled. The Nazis continued to spread propaganda through a radio station called Radio Werewolf. They made a slew of outrageous claims, including that the Allies planned to enslave the Germans. The broadcast urged civilians to stand their ground, even if it meant paying with their life. SS officers admitted after the war that the werewolf unit was inadequate and weak. They also conceded that its leader, Hans Adolf Prutzmann, was incompetent. Simply put, the regiment wasn't nearly as formidable as Nazi propagandists claimed, and it was relatively non-threatening to the Allies all along. Thanks for watching. Which one of these mysterious projects shocked you the most? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.